Welcome to another video. Today we are in London, UK, meeting with Callum finally to discover everything about his beetle. Hi, Jerome. <laughs> so tell us everything about this beast. Tell you everything about it. Well, it's a 1971 1302S Super Beetle. I've had it since 2019. I bought it specifically to convert it. Uh, it's been professionally repainted. I've had it retrimmed, and it's running a Hyper 9 uh, motor, net gain motor. All right. Let's start with the drivetrain first, okay. because that's really what people want to know yes, about. But then there's is. a nice story about the whole car yep. and the way you use it. So what I really like in this setup, it's the like the, probably the most traditional setups, Hyper yes. 9, but it's so nicely done, especially for someone that's not in the trade. So. Yes. Very nice job. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us about the, the whole setup then. Well, it's a, as you say, traditional Hyper 9 setup. It retains the gearbox, so that motor bolts straight into the back. Motor's about 120 horsepower peak, which is about twice as much as it used to have. It was a 1600 engine. Uh, it's got a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, as you can see. 32 kilowatt hour pack, which we've got made up from five Tesla modules from a P100D, the high density versions. And uh, yeah, it's good for about 120 miles. It's a lot faster than it used to be. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's a really great toy. What did you do to the suspension and, and chassis in general to keep it on the road? So the chassis I haven't done anything to. Uh, when I bought the car, it, was, it had been restored in 1991 and had been sitting in a barn. So I didn't have to do very much to it. Uh, having fitted the batteries, whatever, it was a bit heavier at the back, so actually we lifted the back a little bit. But the front, I've got adjustable coilovers on, so I was able to balance out the front. And so the overall stance of the car has been dropped by a bit. I just wanted to get a slightly more aggressive feel to it. So now it handles really nicely, it's good in the corners. It's got a bit more weight over the front than Beatles normally have now because of the batteries in the front. Yeah. And that Which means, we, yeah, it's yeah. great. So you mentioned this is a Super Beetle. Yes. Tell us a bit more. So Super Beetles were introduced, I think, in 71. And it was Volkswagen evolving the front suspension steering geometry. So in the past, the Beetles used to have uh, beam axles, beam, uh, torsion beam suspension. The Super Beetles have McPherson struts, coilovers. So they come with disc brakes in the front. And what that meant for me, so I chose this model, you've got much more space in between them so now okay. I've got a, I've got space to put a charging lead a little patch in there batteries fit better the overall steering geometry is much better so I didn't have to do anything to the brakes at all does it bring it closer to being a 911 <laughs> <laughs> marginally <laughs> marginally that's well, what the seats, are, that's where the seats yeah, are from yeah so, the you know. Porsche from a 911 yeah uh, what about the paint the paint is also Sorry. a Porsche color it is Porsche ocean blue um, this blue metallic with a little bit of green in it Took me a long while to choose this beautiful color, but yeah. So you mentioned off camera that you converted the beetle and then got it yes. uh, retrained and yes. the yes. whole uh, body resprayed. Yes. Uh, tell us your feedback about this solution. <laughs> so when I bought this car in 2019, specifically to convert it, it was blue, but it was a kind of pale, the flat uh, blue. It was actually a Vauxhall color. Um, and I converted it, I did it on a driveway, I did it over lockdown. And having done it and driven it around a lot, I thought this car is just epic, it was so much fun, it needs to be elevated, it needs to go to the next level. So, ripped it all out, repainted it, retrimmed it, reconverted it, did it all over again, and I have to say, if I was to do this again, I wouldn't do it that way around. I'd start off with something that yeah. looks good to start with because it was, you know, it was much harder. So that that's way. definitely something I've noticed in the industry. Typically, a uh, professional will get the customer to get the vehicle restored and then converted yeah. because you know exactly what you're going to start with. Otherwise, you start taking the engine out and then it's all rusty yeah. and you got to spend another few months fixing it. Honestly, it makes much more sense to do it that way around, you know, okay. to have it completely pucker to start with, really clean stuff. And then your own ch only challenge really is to not scratch the paint when you're trying to get yeah, the battery yeah, boxes yeah. in and stuff. But yeah, that makes much more sense. But yeah, it's and more economical and potentially quicker yeah, yeah, too. Exactly that, exactly that. All right, yep. let's see what's under the hood. Under the hood, it. all right. Well, so there we are. There's nothing much then. There's not much <laughs> left, is there? Well, actually, there so is some room, which you don't even get on a, in a Beetle. Well, so that was the point of choosing this particular model, because otherwise you'd be, you know, this space here is taken up with the, with the torsion beams. And you can sometimes get a, flat, a spare tire into a converted Beetle, but it has to slot in the front here. What I've managed to do is we have a little hatch here. Nice. And this is where the original spare wheel would have lived. 
And so I've got a place for charging leads and stuff like that. I think I probably will put a spare wheel in it eventually. Right. And yeah, this great. box has a yes. bit of an history in the EV conversion world. A very special guy made this for you. Yes, <laughs> he did. So Richard Morgan of Electric Classic Cars, otherwise known as Moggy, I got him to build the battery boxes for me, front and rear, because I can't weld. So he did that for me. And I've had help from pretty much everybody in the conversion world. You know, I've bought components from various different places, stuff from Richards, stuff from Chris Hazel at uh, Felton now. You know, and the online forums have been great. There's a lot of help, there's a lot of support for people out there okay. doing it themselves. Well, it looks fantastic, but I Thank really you. want to see inside. So okay. let's All check right. it out. Well, let's open her up then. Wow. So you, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the metal dashboard, yes. the more modern interior. Yes. Well, the, the finish is just fantastic. Yeah, so, so I had this completely redone. So there's a guy called Chris uh, Vining, who runs custom coach trimming up in Evesham, who's a hot rod trimming legend. And it took him a bit of persuasion because he does hot rods, he doesn't do electric cars. But okay. once he got into the idea, he was, he was on board with it. So it's English leather. On the seats, it's got uh, Scottish Houndstooth Spirit of Le Mans Tartan. I wanted to kind of keep a uh, theme going with the blue from the Beetle and the orange for the electric wiring. So that's the kind of the, the, the design thinking. He did a new carpet set for me, he did a new headlining, he built a new rag top. So I think he's done a fantastic job. So what do you do with your Beetle? I drive it around at the weekends and stuff, make yeah. people smile, take it to car shows. So There's what's the next step for it? It's, it's done, isn't it? It's done, you know, it's done. I drive it around, I love it. It's, you know, it's a load of fun, it's a great toy. With Beatles, you know, everybody's got a story about a Beetle. You know, their mum had one or their grandma had one stuff. There's a lot of love for them. So it's everybody smiles when they see it, you know, they kind of wave at you and stuff. It's really nice. It's a nice thing, it's a nice toy to have. So do you take this to shows, not only electric vehicle shows, yes. but also Beetle shows? Yes, I haven't taken it to a Beetle show yet, but I've taken it to various other the classic car shows, okay. which always confuses people, you know, they're not quite sure I was going to say, yeah, there's no exhaust system. No, quite. And so, you know, you leave it like that with the back open and they're kind of like, where's the engine, what's going on, <laughs> don't really understand it, they're not sure whether they like it or they don't, so it's good, it's a good talking point as well. Uh, we haven't shown the charge bot, and the I know you're really proud of your charge bot. I am bot. very, very <laughs> proud of my charge bot, so here we go. There wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I've tried to keep the dashboard original, so where the fuel gauge is, or used to be, I put a little screen in there now, so when we turn the car on, you know, you get a digital display now, okay. know, so maybe I'll show you that a bit later on. Um, but the instrumentation is very, is very plain, I didn't want to have like a big screen in yeah, there, or like yeah. funny switches and stuff, and so it's very, it's all as, as kind of stock as you could make a converted Beetle look, I think. All right, very good. Now, let's say I'm someone doing my very first build, yes. well, willing to do a Beetle. What yes. would be your top three tips? Top three tips, uh, do your homework so you understand how it all works. You don't kill yourself. That's point one, I should think. So training, um, training is learning a good as idea. much as you can. Learning, read, get as much advice as you can, you know, read the forums and so forth. The second thing is the biggest challenge I faced was packaging, making brackets, finding places for things to go and stuff. That was the, really the hardest bit if you don't have a workshop or whatever, or you can't weld. So you have to be prepared for that, because that, I think, took the majority of the time. And the second thing is, you know, take your time over it, enjoy it, you know. Callum, one last thing. This is properly air-cooled, like it was, isn't it? Well, not quite. It, uh, it does have liquid cooling for the, oh, for, the, for, the <laughs> for the inverter here. So we have a tank, uh, we have water fed down with coolant. There's a chill plate down yeah. here that feeds down to the radiator. So it does run fans. So it's, you know, it's air cool ish. Almost, <laughs> yes, almost, kind of. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Callum. Guys, if you like what you saw today, let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up, and guys, we'll see you in the next one.